Hello. For this research presentation, I have chosen to go through examining the most effective smoke alarm sounds to wake children and adults. A little bit about me. My name is Cale McLean. I am a public education officer and fire investigator for Mississauga Fire and Emergency Services. You can find me on social media at Cale McLean. So before I get into my research problem, I wanted to discuss my literature review, just a little bit leading into that. Um, so three of the articles that I had chosen, um, the first one discusses the cognitive and psychological differences in children require a different alarm tone to prompt escape. Second discusses the idea that voice and personalized smoke alarm alerts are more effective than standard alarm tones to prompt children to awaken and escape. And finally discusses that Smoke alarm alerts developed for the unique developmental requirements of sleeping children would also be effective among adults. So these are some key points that also led into that. Um, so being asleep is an important risk factor, which I'll get into a little bit more uh, shortly here. Uh, for death during a residential fire, however, the high frequency tone of smoke alarms in many homes will not adequately awaken children. A sleeping child was 2.9 to 3.4 times more likely to be awakened by each of the three voice alarms than the tone alarm. So this study went through using uh, voice alerts in both male and female voices um, as opposed to just the standard uh, high frequency tone. So due to the differences in cognitive ability and psychological development, the evacuation characteristics of children are different from those of adults. Um, this was a very large uh, portion for me and one of the reasons leading into the uh, research problem. Um, the fourth was the combined voice and warning alarm had optimal effects in stimulating children to perceive risk. And then finally, clearly many children will not be awakened to sounds that will awaken adults. The large standard deviations show the enormous individual variability that exists. So this was a much older study that sort of led into the newer ones. Uh, of testing the newer available options that there are. Um, and one of the big standing factors is just in general, the cognitive and motor abilities of children, um, as it states here, are significantly different from those of adults. The problem of child evacuation lies in their inability to fully perceive and respond to risks. Um, so jumping into the research problem itself and looking for the most effective tone or alert for children uh, to make sure that they're able to uh, awaken and escape. Um, so a smoke alarm program falls under the minimum acceptable model for provisions of the fire prevention uh, and fire safety education under the fire protection. Protection and Prevention Act uh, of 1997. The biggest thing for me uh, in the fire service is that 42% of fatal fires occurred between 10 p.m. and 6.59 a.m. Um, and this was a study that was run uh, from 2009 to 2018 and summarized by the Ontario Fire Marshal and Emergency Management Office. With the smoke alarm program, the three tiers that fall under it are prevention, detection, and escape. So that model is, is from the Ontario Fire Marshals and Emergency Management Office as well. Um, but it's great, but if not, all occupants are alerted the same from the tones produced by their alarms during sleep, then what's the real effectiveness of it if people aren't getting out? And that's the whole point. Um, so effective detection alert is extremely important as many fatal fires occur during the night or early morning when occupants and children are sleeping. It has been shown that conventional alarms are sometimes not effective in awaking children while they sleep and can dramatically increase the risk of injury or death for both children and parents. So that is the research problem that was trying to be answered. When you look at children sleeping during the night and not waking up if there's a fire situation, that's just extending even more so the time trying to get out or the parents trying to get to the child and get the child out as well. Um, so the best probable scenario would be an alarm tone or alert tone that effectively awakens the child so they prompt escape and it's an easy uh, practiced escape plan for the parents and the children to actually get out if there's a house fire. So that leads into the research purpose statement. The purpose of the research presentation is to examine the effectiveness of traditional smoke alarm alerts versus new alert options. So research was conducted to determine if there are better alert options such as male, female, or maternal voice alerts that can be implemented to increase successful escape. So the research question, are voice alert alarms going to be more effective in awakening children and adults versus traditional smoke alarms? 
So for these studies, the research uh, methodology and design uh, was quantitative experimental design. So what they did is they recreated residential and school environment variables to determine the effectiveness of specific alarm tones on different age groups. They used the same tone and environmental variables and sleep stage to determine if tones effective to prompt escape of children would also be effective for adults. And the use of deductive reasoning in their previous results was also employed to determine effectiveness of the alarm tones. Um, so there were many studies leading up to this that a lot of a lot were referenced throughout the articles, um, but as different newer alarms came out and different studies were done, they sort of pushed forward into showing, as you'll see here. So this the first study proposed the novel method of using wearable sensors to collect the data, which measured electrodermal activity, heart rate variability uh, on the children's physiological responses and continuously and quantitatively evaluated the effects uh, of the different alarm tones during the evacuation of the children. Article 2 used a randomized, non-blinded, repeated measure study that compared three maternal voice alarms with respect to their ability to awaken 176 children. The children ranged from 5 to 12 years old and were tested once they had reached four slow-wave sleep stage. And then Article 3 used randomized, non-blinded, repeated measures design as well for 150 adults aged 20 to 49, and they were exposed to, uh, during stage four sleep as well, uh, to four different smoke alarms. So the conclusions from the three articles, the two things we we're trying to answer was one that, for article one, that so the alarm signal with voice alert warnings had the strongest effect on stimulating the children to perceive risk. Um, this was significantly different from previous studies of adults showing them to be more sensitive to voice alerts in terms of voice messages. Children are more sensitive to short keywords than complete sentences because children's ages 3 to 6 have not developed good feedback to language. So that's why you'll see a lot of alarms with short messages that are available on the market today where it's just smoke or co and uh, the warning tone um, and then the results from article 2 show that maternal voice alarms awakened 86 percent and 91 percent of children and prompted 84 percent and to 86 percent to escape compared to 53 percent that awakened and, and 51 percent that escaped from just a standard tone so it showed that a sleeping child was 2.9 to 3.4 times more likely to be awakened by each of the three voice alarms than the tone alarm so the medium time to awaken was 156 seconds for the tone alarm and two seconds for each voice alarm so you can see that the data is pretty effective showing the difference in how much more effective a voice alarm would be as opposed to just the standard tone. And especially with modern construction uh, nowadays and how quickly houses are becoming fully engulfed in flames and escape is being completely hindered, those seconds do count. And then Article 3 pulled everything really together. So it reads, all alarms perform well, demonstrating that smoke alarms developed for unique developmental requirements of sleeping children are also effective among sleeping adults. Compared with a high frequency tone alarm, Use of these alarms may reduce residential fire-related injuries and deaths amongst children while also successfully alerting adult members of the household. So this is the biggest thing. So we're trying to show that there are specific alarm tones that will awaken children better, but can also awaken adults. So if we can have something that's going to speak directly to awakening children and making sure that they can escape um, and also have adults escape, it's exactly what we need. So what this leads into is if I was gonna create my own research and expand on this. My own research question that I wanted to answer is a smoke alarm with voice alert capability more effective than the traditional smoke alarm tone in awakening a child during a fire situation. So my null hypothesis is there will be no difference between voice or standard alarm tone effectiveness in awakening children during a fire. My alternative is that there will be a significantly higher effectiveness percentage for children awakening during a house fire when a female or maternal voice is used as the alert versus the standard alarm tone. So for this, I would be using the quantitative uh, experimental design. So for determining my sample, I would ideally partner with the provincial school boards on the public side and uh, the Ontario Office of the Fire Marshal and Emergency Management. So a stratified sample group will be created of both female and male children ages 5 to 12, which is similar to what you saw in the other uh, studies. So the sample size would be approximately 150 to 200 participants. The gender would be split evenly for testing. A participant pre-screening survey will be used to determine exclusions 
So to touch on auditory impairment, previous fire incident experience, and medications that could impair the ability to awaken normally. So to touch on previous fire incident experience, when dealing with the children, we want to make sure that they haven't been through a fire situation before where they've been awakened by an alarm and had to escape, um, just to make sure it, there's no preconceived mental background or things that could you know affect the welfare of the child. And then numbers will be assigned to each participant for the survey to ensure anonymity. For the experimental design, the group of both female and male children ages 5 to 12 will be in a controlled environment similar to that of a residential occupancy and their bedroom. So using a wearable device, which you also saw in some of the other studies, where we can read ECG activity, heart rate variability, um, just to make sure that they're in the proper sleep stage, which is stage 4 is what we'd like to reach in the sleep cycle, and then an alarm will sound. So alarm one will be a traditional tone, alarm two will be a female voice alert. So the time to awaken and escape will be documented and compared. And for the ethical design of this research study, so to ensure the welfare of the participants, parents will be required to be available throughout the participation process. As well, a mental health counselor will be on site during the testing process to provide emotional support to participants if required. And then the participation in this study is completely voluntary and the Participants are free to withdraw at any time without the need to specify their reason. So for the data analysis portion of the research, uh, the program that I would be utilizing would be uh, the IBM program for SPSS. So the results would be entered to create a parameter of alarm tone effectiveness based on the time it takes the child to awaken and then attempt escape. The data that would be entered into the program would be their participant number, sleep stage reached, alarm tone type, time to awaken, and time to escape. So we say that time to attempt escape, so we're not measuring the actual time of the child getting out of the house. We want to see the point where they realize that there's an alarm, realize that there's something wrong, and try to get out of the situation. And then for the data analysis, so it'll be input into the software to show the average time to awaken, the average time to attempt escape to obtain the descriptive statistics. The following sequence of analysis will be followed, and this comes from the uh, Creswell and Gutterman uh, readings from 2019. So we'll be measuring the central tendencies. So that's your mean, median, and mode times. Any variability will rank based on relative standing. The inferential stats. So we've done a larger sample group of the children just so we can use that compared to previous studies on the population itself for alarm tone. And then we're going to test the hypothesis. So for the research findings, once everything is compiled, the information itself is going to be published in forms that will speak to policymakers, fire regulatory bodies, the fire safety educational community, and the public. So the published results will be published via a report online, which will be available for public access and consumption, and the information to be available for dissemination in form of a research article, PowerPoint presentation, slide decks, and infographic. Um, and for the public consumption side of things, the PowerPoint presentations and infographics will be designed in a way that the public can easily grasp the information. Um, so with these results, I'd like to have it one, you know, be in that technical side of things, but also be available to uh, easily grasp for any of the public or any presentation. So the goal is to reach the public to inform them that there is in fact smoke alarm options that are more effectively going to awaken their children and will help them uh, escape a home fire. So overall, for the ethics of the uh, quantitative research for this, the children obviously can't sign and consent themselves, so it'll be parental written informed consent. There will be a REB and uh, ethics approval boards, uh, which was the same throughout all of the other studies. Because we're dealing with children who are vulnerable participants, the welfare will be closely monitored by parents and the uh, mental health counselors. And then there's the right to back out of the study at any time. So that can be from the parents or any sort of any sort of witness mental uh, stress that is affecting the child, they can back out at any time. And anonymity of the individuals by utilizing assigned numbers. So each person, because we're gonna be asking pre-survey information and we're dealing with children, they'll all be assigned numbers and no names will be assigned to any of the information that's released. These are the referenced pages that I used um, and different articles that were set up throughout to get my information as well as design how I would conduct the research myself. And that concludes the research presentation. Thank you very much.